Never would I thought that the day would come. Never have I thought that the day would come where I say these words. Today, let's find out what every fanboy's favorite underdog, Intel, is bringing to the table with their brand new Rocket Lake 11 Gen Core i9. 11, 900, K, okay? How much further can they reheat 14 nanometer, pun intended? Why does it only have eight cores and 16 threads? Two less cores than the previous generation i9-10900K. Is it too little, pun intended, too late? For those of you guys who are getting a little salty because we're still getting 14 nanometer with this brand new 11 gen Core i9, I urge that you guys go drink more liquid. Would you guys like some coffee, tea, or us? Speaking of Aorus, huge thanks to our sponsor Gigabyte for sending over this beautiful Z590 Aorus Master motherboard that made this review possible. This is truly a beautiful specimen with its sleek matte black finish and gunmetal accents. To take full advantage of the new Intel Core 11 Gen processors, this motherboard packed in an 18 plus 1 phase true power design, an improved thermal design, and all the goodies that come with the Z590 chipset including Wi-Fi 6, crazy fast 10 gigabit Ethernet, PCIe 4.0 support, and also support for 100 128 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM with XMP profiles up to 5,000 megahertz and more. Get yours now. Links in the description. Full disclosure, this video is brought to you by Aorus in collaboration with Intel, but we do reserve our right to an unbiased opinion, as we should when reviewing a processor. Also because I'm a bangsawan and they cannot buy my opinion. Anyways, let's get back to it. Looking at the Rocket League microarchitecture of the Core i9-11900K, you'll see some key differences compared to the previous generation i9-10900K. In this hopefully final form, Bankai of Intel's 40 nanometer silicone fabrication process, we're looking at mainly five new features. The first one is the brand new Cypress Cove CPU core. Next, we have the Gen 12 XELP integrated graphics that's supposed to outperform the previous generation. And then we have the Gaussian Network Accelerator GNA 2.0, a hardware component that enables the deep learning boost, DL boost, AI acceleration feature, AVX 5.2. Next, we have the updated platform I.O. that introduces the PCI 4.0 support. And finally, we have the chipset bus with double the width over the previous generation. We haven't got all day to dive into the specifics of every new feature, so leave a comment down below if you want us to break it down further for you guys in future videos. What you should get more familiar with are the new and much welcomed OC features that come with 11th gen. No doubt to find out some stiff competition from Team Red. Firstly, we have memory overclocking and still no CPU overclock for mid-range H570 and B560 chipsets when paired with 11th gen CPUs. We also have a groundbreaking new feature, real-time memory frequency settings. This allows you to change your PC's memory frequency on the fly within Windows itself without having to reboot your system, saving you a lot of time when finding the highest stable memory frequency for your machine. Thirdly, we have the Gear 2 mode, which lets us run the memory controller and DRAM frequency in a 1 to 1 ratio, which is conventional, or gear it down to a 2 to 1 ratio, running the memory controller at half the DRAM frequency. In theory, Gear 2 mode would allow us to crank memory frequencies up past 8000 MHz with Rocket Lake. Turn down for what? Okay, I okay, cannot copyright. Next, we have the settings related to AVX2 and AVX512 instruction sets. Firstly, the new AVX512 offsets lets us uncouple the AVX frequency scaling of our CPU with our overclock to prevent AVX workloads from affecting the stability of our machine. We can also now completely disable AVX in the BIOS, which forces our OS to use a non-AVX execution path. Finally, exclusive to the i9-11900K and the KF processors, we have the new Intel Adaptive Boost Technology ABT, which aims to drastically improve multi-threaded performance, which content creators like myself will definitely be excited about. ABT pushes the CPU towards higher clock speeds when more than one of the CPU core is loaded by taking account not just the power limit, uh, also thermals, cooling efficiency of your system, but also your motherboard's VRM, which is why having a flagship motherboard like this Z590 Aorus Master is actually gonna impact your OC. If the VRM is up to stuff, additional power will be drawn to elevate all the CPU cores to higher boost states, improving performance for multi-threaded workloads. ABT is also 100% crash-proof because it follows the CPU's clock voltage curve. Of course, we're also gonna have to deal with higher temps and power consumption. 
Diving into the specifications of the chip itself, uh, as a comparison, we are putting it against the Core i9-10900K from the previous generation, as well as the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. Compared to the last gen i9-10900K, on paper, things do not look that good. We're getting two less cores, four megabytes less L3 cache, and a slightly slower base and boost clock. But hey, PCI Gen 4, am I right? Anyways, Intel stated that they had to make those changes in order to improve power efficiency and overall performance. But how? You are getting two less cores and the TDP is still the same. Well, the numbers don't lie, and I'm actually pretty interested to find out how much ABT actually improves multi-threaded performance in this new Core i9. So without further ado, let's take a look at some benchmarks. These are the specifications of our test bench. In order to fully utilize the 11th Gen Core i9-11900K, we're using a motherboard with excellent VRM, which is the Z590 Aorus Master. And in order to keep the temperatures down during overclock, we're also using a 360ml AIO cooler by Thermotake. So what's the verdict? So what's the verdict? Firstly, let's take a look at some pros because this is a processor. So the first one is actually pretty surprising for me, which is we are seeing a huge jump in low threaded applications. And the second one is that less is more, it seems, because eight cores here uh, often outperform 10 from the previous generation. We also have better application performance and the new OC features are bomb. And also we have dummy proof OC and ABT for people who actually uh, need multi-threaded performance from Intel. And we also have the improved iGPU, which may matter to you if you don't have a GPU now that everything is in shortage. We also have the long-awaited PCIe 4.0, which everybody has been waiting since Z590 launched. And finally, we have the AVX512 and the Outboost, which will be quite crucial if you use uh, Intel for machine learning and also research purposes. Next, we have the meh, which is the fact that this is slightly cheaper than the Ryzen 9 5900X. Um, it could be a bit more now because the scalpers are jacking up prices for those processors. So this could be a good news or bad news for you guys. Uh, cup half full, half empty kind of scenario. Finally, we have the cons. And the first one is something that is astonishing even for me, the fact that this has a lower gaming performance. And secondly, we have also lower application performance than the competition. It has a high power consumption, to be expected anyways. It runs a little hot, so you're gonna need a beefier cooler, uh, which is probably the reason why it doesn't come with a CPU cooler in the retail pack. And also, finally, we only have one PCIe uh, 4.0 M.2 slot, while the other ones will run on PCIe 3.0. It's kind of a bummer, actually. Um, that's it. 
The 11th Gen Intel Core i9-11900K is priced at 2399 ringgit or 539 US dollars and I give it a 7.5 out of 10. While our Z590 Aorus Master motherboard is priced at 1999 ringgit or 40999 US dollars and I give it a highly recommended 8.5 out of 10 because of the excellent VRM, 10 GB Ethernet and also because it looks lit AF with all that RGBs. Honestly speaking, I'm a little sad because like many of you, I was kind of hoping that Intel would come back with something extraordinary to bring balance to the force. After all, proper competition between the blue and red team drives innovation and can only benefit all of us as consumers. But hey, on the flip side, it is honestly mind-boggling how much extra juice Intel is able to squeeze out of this 40 nanometer tech. I can't wait to see what happens when they actually make a 10 nanometer processor with all these new fancy OC tech. For now, if you are looking for a good gaming CPU, the new 11th gen Core i5-11600K seems to be a pretty good choice uh, looking at the US dollar cheaper price tag and what all the other reviewers are saying. I think that yeah, it will be pretty good. And also if your work actually benefits from the AVX512 and the Boost um, technology, uh, for instance, if you're a researcher uh, who could use all these new instructions uh, to speed up calculations but do not want to pony up for an expensive Xeon setup, then the Core i9 is actually the affordable option. Funny how that works, right? Otherwise, do what you want to do. It's your money anyways. I'm just here to provide you with my opinions as well as empirical data on the product so you could make an informed decision. If you like this video, you know what to do. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions regarding i9, uh, 11 gen and all that good stuff. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification ding ding. And also follow us on Facebook, Instagram. And don't forget to follow Aorus uh, and thank them for sponsoring this video to make everything possible. Without further ado, let's look at some comments from you guys. So the first comment comes from Hisham Mohamad. I'm not gonna lie, Mohas Brushens got the best video quality, better than Linus Tech Tips, I should say. Don't get me wrong, I do love Linus, but Mohas is better. Thank, thank you, I guess. Jet Pang say, someone touched your package before you. Haram, ah, bro. Jinju Wu say, oh no, you try to make me betray Asus. Ayah, bro. There's no such thing as brand loyalty. Ah. Just buy whatever, ah. Bang Sawan say one. Got money, buy whatever you want. Chua Kiman say, as Legion owner, I need to slim down. Correct bro, I also need to slim down. But a bit hard for me, cause if I too slim later, I disappear. The camera cannot spy me, then cannot autofocus. In the wonderful world of YouTube, the first comment comes from Woz, Wozzy Wotski. Wow, that's quality content. Keep it up and you will grow the audience you deserve. Plus one subscriber, plus more more subscribers. By the end of this year, let's hit 100,000 subscribers. Moi Chi Hui say, since all the PU shortage, might as well review back smartphones for the time being. Bro, I'm the bangsawan. I can review whatever I want. Ma. That's all for the comment session this week. We don't have time to reply to more comments, but please leave a comment down below and we will try to reply to you in the next comment section. Bye!